Good morning and welcome to this video. My name is Lars Hoekland and I'm sitting here in my study in Norway getting ready to record video number three in the series about the believer's armor. Now, this is a very important subject. It's very important to understand what is going on, spiritually speaking, that we are at war. So we had video number one was uh, just, a, just a general introduction to uh, to this passage of scripture then uh, video number two was part one of spiritual warfare this video is part two of the spiritual warfare because we need to know that we are in a spiritual war today this is so important we need to know that so i stress that um, because the subject is so important that it's important to have a a good introduction to to the actual armor so next video we'll be looking at how to resist the devil uh, then we'll be looking at god's armor and uh, when we look at god's armor we'll be looking at uh, the belt of truth the breastplate of righteousness the gospel of peace which is of course the feet the the shoes uh, the shield of faith Helmet of Salvation and Sword of the Spirit. And we'll be finishing off the study with prayer, which is in verse 18. And of course, it's not actually part of the armor, but it is re really part of the spiritual warfare. It is so important to have prayer as, lo as well as all these pieces of armor. So... Uh, the scriptures we're looking at, of course, is Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. That's where these uh, videos will be found, uh, where, the, where the scriptures are from. And we're, I'll just read over again verses 10 through 13, because we're still kind of like uh, in an introductory phase of this series. But let me start with uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So, we did look at some of these, did look at these verses in the last video, but uh, I do have something else, some more that uh, I want to say. Now, important to see, uh, we are at war, spiritually speaking. The whole universe is at war, to be quite honest. Uh, there is a war going on between God and Satan. And it's very well described in the book of Job, where they actually have a verbal conflict, you could say. We're not going to turn there, but, you know, at your own leisure, you can look at uh, Job chapter 1 and 2, if you want to. Okay. Uh, the angels are at war. Now you have good angels and you have bad angels. Now we call the bad or evil angels, we call them evil spirits because as um, Hebrews chapter 1 tells us that uh, the angels are ministering spirits. So both the angels are spirits and the demons are also spirits, or the evil angels are also spirits. And, of course, the Bible tells us in the, in the book of Revelation that uh, there is one third of the angels that fell with Lucifer, with the, with the devil, when he, when he was cast out of heaven. But um, two thirds, which is most of the angels then, uh, are still on the good side, on God's side. Now, the Christian life is a battle. It's kind of like a, a wrestling match, you could say. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So we've got the idea of a wrestling match here. 
um, and we, we did talk about that in the last uh, video but this is a this is a fight for life you could say now it's easy to lose perspective uh, we read our books we play our cds we uh, send our kids to awana we go to church and we think that uh, all is well you know like it says in the song all is it is well with my soul you know but we forget that millions of people are in satan's claws you could say or hands at least you know in his grasp you could say in his grip uh, we get concerned with our little sphere you know the little place where we live maybe our family and close relatives and close friends and we're not always concerned about the rest of the world we forget sometimes that there is a war going on on out there and we Sometimes we focus on uh, liturgy, you know, sometimes we become lazy, uh, sometimes we don't care, and sometimes we stagnate, and we kind of like, we we lose our, you know, we lose what keeps us going, you know, we don't keep going like that. Uh, and we find that we are actually not taking part in the battle. Now, if we go to... 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verses 8 and 9. I read this in the, in the last uh, video as well. This is uh, Paul saying, but I will tarry at Ephesus unto Pentecost. He says he's, he's going to stay at Ephesus. And of course, uh, we did look at the church at Ephesus from uh, the book of Revelation in the first video. But then in verse 9 it says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. You know, Paul said there were many adversaries, and he kind of like he says, I must stay at Ephesus because there are many adversaries. That's why I have to stay. You know, the, the, the enemy is plenty. You know, the enemy is strong. The enemy is out there. And some people, they don't know about this battle that's going on. Uh, some, again, try to avoid the battle. Uh, sometimes there is an indifference, and this is dangerous, like the church at Laodicea, you know, seeing that I talked about uh, the book of Revelation. Uh, the church at Laodicea, they were indifferent. They weren't hot or cold. They didn't really care. And this is a very dangerous position to have. Sometimes people say, I do as I please. We should be saying, I do as God pleases. Now, what are we in investing in? Now, you have talents. Some have many talents, some have fewer talents. Uh, everybody has some talents. And... Some have money, some don't have very much money. We all have time, but we all have limited time. Now, these are all resources that needs to be invested. What am I investing my talents, my money, and my time in? And what are you investing your talents, your money, and your time in? Now, I think, I mean... Baptist preachers often concentrate on the money because they need money to keep the church running and it's natural. But I am more concerned about the time issue because do you take time for God? Maybe you give your tenth. Maybe you even give uh, holy gifts. Maybe you, you give to people that are needy. You know, sometimes you do that. But do you give of your time? The thing is that if you spend your money for God, you can always get back more money. But if you give your time to God, that is time you spent. You don't get that time back. And because of that, it's very important what we invest our lives in. We must realize that we are at war. You know the song, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus, Ye Soldiers of the Cross, you know, 
very good song that uh, <laughs> if I wasn't a little bit croaky, I'd be singing it for you now. But verse number two says, the arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. That is what I'm trying to say here when I'm talking about spiritual warfare, that we can't trust our own strength. We need God's strength. We don't seek our own strength. We seek God's strength. We can't trust ourselves. We can't do it ourselves. Now, verse number 10 is in Ephesians 6. Verse number 10 is the preparation, you can say. Finally, my brethren, here he comes to the punchline of the epistle to the Ephesians. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, this is a hundred percent God, you know, just, you know, be as close to God as you can. Be strong in the Lord. Uh, just tap into his power. And then uh, in verse 11, already we see the uh, armor of God being mentioned. Put on the whole armor of God. <clears throat> Pardon me. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So uh, this armor is what God has prepared for us. There is almost like a paradox here. There, there are many paradoxes in the Bible. It doesn't mean that they aren't true. Okay, It just means that our way of reasoning is just too low. We don't understand how Jesus can be 100% man and 100% God. Surely must be 50% of each. No, God is not limited by our feeble reasoning. You know, uh, God is not limited by anything. And uh, these uh, paradoxes that we find in the Bible um, are no problem. There is no problem for God. It's problem for us because our logic can't understand it. But uh, we see God's strength and then we need God's strength. But we also need initiative. We've got to have God's strength and our initiative. And these two need to come together. Cromwell said it like this. Trust God and keep your gunpowder dry. That's a good way of saying it. Now, uh, a father took his son to a boxing match. And I don't know if you've seen the Rocky movies. But you know Rocky Balboa. He kind of went to the corner before a match. And he... He he did the cross. He crossed himself. And um, uh, this one of the fighters did that. And uh, the, the son asked his father, Daddy, does that help? Daddy, you know, he, he makes the cross there. And his father said, only if he can hit. Only if he can punch. So... There has to be both things. You know, you need to have the strength and you need to have the initiative and you need to have the strength of God and you need to know how to use it. The moral is that um, if the, a boxer cannot box, it will not help him. This is uh, how it is in Christian lives. We need to know what to do. We can't just say, oh, I've got the power of God, if you don't know what to do with it. We have the resources, we have the power, and we have the armor, and we can't just be uh, running on empty. don't know if that is the right expression to use here, but uh, we need the Holy Spirit, and we need God's power in our lives. Without that, we can't do anything. Now, God is our strength, but we only receive strength when we obey. We've got to live close to God to be able to tap into that strength that he has for us. We are not able to fight the enemy in our own strength uh, uh, or with our own wisdom. But if we put on this armor that we're going to look at in this series, uh, then we can stand protected. John chapter 10, 
Verse 29 says, uh, Jesus is speaking here. My father, which gave them, gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Now, he's talking about his sheep here. But, you know, Jesus says that if you are a Christian, you're safe. No one can pluck you out of God's hand. Uh, when it says no one, it is a, a Greek word that is uvips. Uvips. Don't know how to pronounce that. But uh, it, in English, it's, it says no man in the King James. But man is in italics, if you look at it. It's... Um, it shows that uh, something has been added to the translation here. Because um, if you take away man, you s you're left with no. And no seems strange when it's on its own. So you've got to put no man in there to, for it to be easy to read and more understandable. But what it actually is saying here that it doesn't say no man. It says nothing. We are so concerned, you know, it says here that it says no man. Okay, no man can come and snatch us out. But it says, it doesn't say just that no man can come and snatch us out. It says nothing can pluck us out of God's hand. Uh, no one has as much power as God has. You realize that. And the word pluck or snatch is also found in Matthew chapter 13, verse 19. Uh, when it says uh, catcheth away. Um, I don't think we're going to go there. But uh, the devil snatches the word in Matthew chapter 13. He snatches the seed. He is the one that snatches it away. And this is a warning to us. Because that's what he wants to do. I want to read a couple of verses from psalms for you psalm verse uh sorry chapter 91 psalm 91 verse 1 says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty and i've gone through this in a in a study or should i say a devotional series in uh, in norwegian on one of my uh, written blogs but you know if you go through this psalm, it is an amazing psalm. It's a wonderful psalm. It goes on, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome uh, pestilence. Just wonderful uh, psalm that talks about how God is able to protect you. It's a blessed piece of scripture. And we we know it mostly because of verse 11 and verse 12, which is quoted by the devil when uh, Jesus was tempted in the wilderness by the devil. Then uh, the devil quotes verse 11 and 12 that says, For he should give his angel ch angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Now you might remember this from Luke chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. But, you know, this is... Um, I don't really have time to go really into the psalm, but the psalm itself is wonderful. It's talking about God's protection over you and over your life. And just imagine all the promises we have, you know... If you find a study about Psalm 91, you know, do it. I mean, I realize you can't read what I've written in, in Norwegian, but, uh, you know, it's a, it is a wonderful, wonderful psalm. And also Psalm 40, uh, 34, sorry. Psalm 34 is also a wonderful psalm. Verse number seven says, The angel of the Lord encampeth a round about them that fear him and delivereth them so basically what is saying here in psalm 34 7 is that 
the Lord protects us. As far as the end result of the war, we cannot lose. Because Jesus has already won the fight for us. Okay, We cannot lose it. And he is greater than anyone else. But, and here is the warning, we can lose some battles along the way. Now, if you lose a battle or two or ten, it doesn't mean that you lose the war. But you do lose something. I'll get back to that. Second Corinthians. <clears throat> if you can find it here. Second Corinthians chapter 2. And verse 11 says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, uh, we don't want Satan to get an advantage of us. We don't want him to win some of the battles. Uh, although we know that we might lose some battles along the way. Satan takes advantage of our sinful nature. And a little sin can give room for the devil. You know, as it says, I, I think it's Galatians 5, 9, but it says, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. You know, you don't need an awful lot of sin for it to change everything. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> so... Uh, A small fox can ruin a, a whole vineyard. You know, uh, you don't need a lot of bad for it to have a great effect. And just a little bit of sin in our lives can mean that uh, we lose some of the battles that we're, we're into. Now, Satan wants to overpower God. But God has all the power. He is almighty, as we say. Now, we can't lose the war if we belong to God. But we can be overpowered by the devil in some battles where we go in, we, we give in to his devices. You know, uh, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 6 and read verse 12. It says, therefore, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is why we need to put on the armor. This is why we need to do this study and why you need to look at all the videos in this study. Uh, people are not our enemies, okay? We shouldn't hate people. Uh, Jesus, he hated sin, but he loved the sinner. That's why he spent so much time with them. Sin is, you can say kind of like, it's behind the sinner in a way. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not identical to the sinner. It's like, um, it affects him, but it's not really, you can't say that uh, the sinner is, just the sin the sinner is more than that the sinner is a person that god loves uh, and the god of this world has blinded uh, them that are, are sinners uh, back in second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4 it says in whom the god of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the the image of God, should shine onto them. So, uh, you have been uh, blinded and uh, been tricked, you could say, by the devil. Now, we should have compassion with sinners because of this. Uh, we should ha hate the devil and hate the sin and even the evil spirits, but not the sinner, because God loves the sinner and wants to save him. And this is not a physical war, like I, like I say. Uh, it is a supernatural war. It is a spiritual war. Now, how does he define them then in verse number 12? He says, against 
principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So you've got all these um, things. Note that it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And that is kind of like the, the start of it. And then it talks about principalities. Though these are spiritual principalities, okay? When you talk about powers, it's talk about spiritual powers because it's a spiritual battle. Uh, rulers of the darkness of this world, kind of obvious. Uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, got authorities. We have rulers. We have evil spirits. We have different uh, categories of demons. They all have like a hierarchy. Uh, so here is what Paul is saying. We're fighting a supernatural enemy with high and intense organization. Okay, uh, God has different types of angels in a hierarchy and they are organized and it's the same on the evil side. Uh, Satan has the same thing. So this also goes for the angels of the devil. Or evil spirits or, dev or, or demons, if you please, if that's what you prefer to say. Now, God created all the angels and they were different in nature and had different names or titles. You got cherubs, cherubims, seraphims, archangels. You got strength, strength and, and thrones, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, now, if I go to Ephesians chapter one, it's a little bit too far. Ephesians chapter one, verses twenty and twenty-one says, which he wrote in Christ when he, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come you now it's interesting to read that after you've seen what it says in ephesians six twelve, isn't it now in daniel uh i'm not going to turn there but in daniel chapter 9 and chapter 10, uh, we see that God gave orders uh, to possibly to the archangels then. And uh, this angel was on his way to Daniel, but he was hindered and he was held back. So there is a spiritual battle going on that we cannot see actually. Now, when it talks about rulers of the darkness of this world, this is uh, we're talking here about demons who has infiltrated uh, the world's political structure, okay? Uh, the world's rulers of this darkness uh, means, in other words, rulers that belong to the darkness. They are ruled by the darkness. They are really influenced and controlled by the darkness. And of course, darkness is something that makes us think of hell and the kingdom of Satan. When you got saved, uh, you were removed, you were gone, like, snatched away from the kingdom of darkness. Colossians 1, 13 says this, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So now you belong not to the kingdom of darkness, but to the kingdom of light. Or you can say the kingdom of God. Uh, the Bible calls hell a place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Doesn't sound very nice, does it? And sometimes it's called outer darkness. Uh, also in Revelation chapter 9, let me just read verses 1 through 3 there. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth, and to him... Uh, was given the key of, of the bottomless pit and he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power now 
It's talking here about the bottomless pit, like a, a bottomless hole in the ground. And just this just illustrates, you know, just the darkness of everything that has to do with devil or Satan. Uh, and you have all the way through the Bible, you have this conflict between darkness and light, between evil and good, between Satan and God. And it goes on all to almost all the way out through the book of Revelation. I mean, he is he is put away finally in in the book of Revelation, but uh, it's uh, way out there. Now, I know there are many conspiracy, conspiracy theories out there, and uh, I haven't tried to really study these uh, conspiracy theories very much. I know many people think this is very important. Uh, I'm concentrating on, on studying the Word of God and not conspiracy theories, but there is something to that. Um, I know that when you look at the, do uh, the dollar bill, you see the pyramid, you see the, uh, uh, the triangle, which is a um, picture, picture of uh, the, the triune God, you know, the Trinity, and you have the eye of Horus, and uh, you have what you call the third eye. Uh, you have conspiracy theories about the Illuminati, uh, about demons high in the political system, which also is consistent with what we just read in the Bible. And uh, it's not just, you know, Hitler and Nero and Idi Amin these people you know there there are lots of other people that are bad people and are really in influenced by the darkness of this world or as it's called the god of this world we just read it um now sometimes it's very obvious that uh, evil is at work other times it's more hidden and that's why we have all these conspiracy theories i suppose but this system will end in Revelation chapter 18, we read about the Babylon that will be destroyed and uh, the rulers of this world will be, um, well, the financial system will collapse and, you know, it, you know, all this will, uh, will end sooner or later in the, in the future. Okay, when we go back to um, Ephesians uh, 6, we talk about room, rulers of this world, which is uh, Cosmocator. Cosmocator uh, in Greek means world rulers. Okay, and it's also used about Satan. Uh, these are demons which um, um, who rules the world through people. Okay. And it is like a network of demons, including a hierarchy. So you've got some that are higher ones and some that are lower ones. People who has been involved in the occult and gotten saved, they have come with some information about some of this network that exists uh, spiritually. And uh, this is a very sophisticated network. And it's beyond all comprehension, really, for us. It's hard for us to understand the, the spiritual dimension because it's normally hidden for us. But the one thing we have that we've got to stick to and uh, read is the Bible. Uh, I tried at one point to, to study some of these uh, evil things, but the thing is that if you study the occult too much, it kind of messes with your head. And uh, the best you can do is really to study the Bible and know what the Bible says. So that if you see something, you can know if the Bible says it's good or bad. Now, when you want to invite someone to church, they might say, uh, I don't have the time or uh, I've got other plans or I'm tired uh, and we kind of leave it at that, but um, uh, and and sometimes we we don't really want to invite somebody because it's it's an effort, you know. We can't be bothered, but 
uh, we need to keep going. We need to have God's word in the war. And we need to go to church. And we need to get other people to come to church. And can you imagine a soldier who doesn't go to the battle because he is resting in the barracks? And then he says, ah, the others can go. That's what we do if we don't try to stay active for the Lord. Now, do we want to win the war? Then we must kind of like suck in the word of God, you know, just suck it all in. And uh, we must uh, lift up the Lord Jesus and we need to resist the devil. If we resist the devil, it says that the uh, Bible says that he will flee. Now, what is the purpose of our war? you might say. Well, verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armour of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. We, I mentioned in uh, the earlier video that uh, we're not supposed to run an attack. We're supposed to stand. That's what the Bible says. We're supposed to stand. Uh and when it says wherefore, then it's good to check above that word and see what is there for. Now, God has the power, verse 10, and the armor is available in verse 11, and the enemy is strong in verse 12. Therefore, verse 13, we need to stand, we need to withstand. Now, when is this evil day that they're talking about? It's any day. Any day where the devil is in control here on, on this planet. It's today, it was yesterday, it is tomorrow. Any day when the devil is here on, on earth. Now, some continue fighting. And, you know, it's true that every day is a battle. Or others quit or surrender to the enemy or fall by the wayside. Uh, and something that is really destroying a lot of Christians is that uh, they want to be married more than they want to follow God and Jesus. So they... They marry someone who is unsaved and, you know, it's easier to pull someone down than to pull someone up because of the law of gravity. So what happens often when people marry somebody that is not saved is that uh, they stop going to church. They stop living um, for God. They Sometimes they even stop reading the Bible, you know, and... Um, they're not standing anymore, like uh, it says in, in verse 14, you know, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. You know, uh, they're not standing. They're laying down. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, let me see if I can find it here. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, there is so much that we could uh, read here, but uh, let me read verse 24 through 27. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the price, so run that ye may obtain, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring unto sub into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Which means... Uh, there actually means uh, being put on the shelf. Now, we could have read verses 16 through 19 and, um, yeah. But this is a great chapter for you to, to read if you have the time. Now, 
Paul, he he preached and he fought and he he ran the race. You know, he he finished his race, and and many have done it all. You know, they have preached, they have led, they have taught, they had led even led people to Christ. But when the gun smoke has disappeared, then you see that they have fallen. Uh, and what happened was that, yes, they did great, but they didn't wear the armor. Terrible things happen in, in some people's life. And if you don't wear the armor, you can't make it. Now, let me just read a couple of verses here. Uh, James chapter 4, verse 7. See, this is what we have to do. Uh, James 4, 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And First Peter 5, verses 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So, um, we are to stand, we are to resist the devil. Uh, Satan will attack constantly if we live for God. Uh, now, you don't need to run around and search and say, oh, where's, where's the devil? Uh, if you do what God wants you to do, he will find you and he will attack you. And then we have to resist. We have to stand and wear our armor. Now, it is so sad when we fall. You know, sometimes the world just hits us like a, like a steam truck. You know, we, we can lose our reward. Second John chapter <laughs> chapter 1 yeah second john verse 8 says look to yourself uh, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought but that we receive a full reward so if you lose some of the battles doesn't mean that you'll lose the war it just means that if you don't stand and resist the devil you might lose out on some of the prices, some of the rewards that God has for you uh, after this life. So we must stand if you want the entire reward. God's mercy and strength is with us. We cannot be snatched out of our Father's hand, but we can lose our reward. Now, there is a a reward, a crown that is the crown of salvation. Of course, if you're saved, you, you get that no matter what. But there are other Stephanos, you know, um, and rewards that uh, is not, hasn't got anything to do with salvation, but has to do with, with service for God. Now, we can lose rewards if we don't stand and fight the devil. So this is a very serious word and it's a very serious topic. And as we go back to uh, chapter six of Ephesians, you know, we will be looking at the armor in verse 13 through 17 and we will look more at this uh, in, in the next videos. But, uh, you know, we must be ready. Christians and families are under attack today. And only if we stand on Christ and the word of God, then we can uh, defend ourselves and we can withstand and we can resist the devil. That's what we need to do. Uh, don't attack hell with a squirt gun. You know, just uh, stand 
and resist. Now that's the end of this video. If you want to watch more videos that I've recorded, you go to Rev Lars videos at WordPress, sorry, dot WordPress dot com. Um, and uh, in two weeks time, I'm hoping to come with uh, video number four, which is about how to resist the devil. Hope this uh, uh, video was interesting for you. I hope you maybe you learned something new, or at least that you uh, maybe thought that, uh, hey, I want to watch some more of this because this is interesting. So uh, whoever you are, I pray that God will be with you and uh, I'll be back with a video in about two weeks. God be with you.